Two objects, A and B, are placed in a freezer at the same time. The temperature of A, x minutes after being placed in the freezer, is given by the function f where f of x maps to 5 minus 2 over 3x. The temperature of B, x minutes after being placed in the freezer, is given by the function g, where g of x maps to 7 minus 3 over 4x. Part 1, sketch a graph showing y equals f of x and y equals g of x for x values greater or equal to 0 but less than or equal to 36. Okay, so we have two functions. f of x maps to 5 minus 2 over 3x and g of x maps to 7 minus 3 over 4x. So what we can do is use our f of x function in the calculator, our table function. So we would input f of x equals 5 minus 2 over 3x and we would start at 0 and end at 36 and do steps of 1 and that will give us all our coordinates that we need. And into the calculator for the g of x function we would also have to put f of x. So we would have f of x equals 7 minus 3 over 4x and our x values would start at 0 also and end at 36 and also be in steps of 1 and that would generate all the coordinates that we need. Alternatively we can just substitute in some x values to find some y values and generate a few coordinates and join them together. So two points on the line y equals f of x are going to be 0 and 5 so if we substitute 0 into our f of x function We'll have 5 minus 2 over 3 multiplied by 0, which will give us a y value of 5. So 0, 5 is 1 point. So we go to 0 on the x-axis, 5 in the y-axis, and we plot a point. So that's the first point on the green line. And 36 minus 19 is another point. So if we substitute 36 into our function, we'll have 5 minus 2 over 3 multiplied by 36, which will give us minus 19. So we go to 36 on our x-axis and we go to minus 19 on our y-axis and we plot our point. Now ideally we want an extra point for our function f of x because we could have made a mistake here and plotted the two points and they would still join up. So ideally we want three points because if they don't line up we know we've made a mistake somewhere along the way. Then two points on the line y equals g of x are 0 comma 7. So if we substitute 0 into our g of x function, we get 7 minus 3 over 4 multiplied by 0, which gives us 7. So we go to 0 on the x-axis, 7 on the y-axis, and we plot that point. That's the first point there in the blue line. And the other point is 36 minus 20. So if we substitute 36 into our function g of x, we get 7 minus 3 over 4 multiplied by 36, which gives us minus 20. So we go to 36 on the x-axis, minus 20 on the y-axis, and plot our point. And then we join them together. So the two lines are shown below. So the green line is our f of x function, which is 5 minus 2 over 3x. And our blue line is our g of x function, which is 7 minus 3 over 4x. Part 2. Use your graph to estimate the values of x for which f of x is less than or equal to g of x. So use your graph means we draw on the graph. So we're only interested in values of x here. So what we do is we see the point at which our graphs cross, or our lines intersect, which is this point here. And we draw a line straight up until we touch the x-axis because we're interested in x values. So part two, from the graph, the values of x for which f of x is less than or equal to g of x are x values greater or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 24. So this is approximately 24 on our x-axis. So it's x values from 0 up as far as 24 and including 0 and 24. So remember we were interested in values for which f of x, which is our green line, is less than or equal to g of x, which is our blue line. And we can see for all values less, all x values less than 24, the green line is below the blue line. 
So the green line, the values of x of the green line or of our f of x function are less than our g of x function are all the way up as far as 24. And after 24 on our x-axis, um, it, it changes. The blue line then is lower than the green line. And the blue line represents g of x. So after 24, g of x is less than f of x. So from the graph, the values of x, so remember we're only interested in the x-axis, for which f of x, which is the green line, is less than or equal to g of x, which is the blue line, are f x values from 0 to 24, including both. Because we can clearly see the green line is lower than the blue line from 0 up to 24, and then the opposite happens. The blue line then is lower than the green line. Part 3. Use algebra to determine the values of x for which f of x is less than or equal to g of x. So, using algebra, we're going to let f of x be less than or equal to g of x. So we swap f of x for 5 minus 2 over 3x. Bring down our inequality sign. We swap g of x for 7 minus 3 over 4x. And then we basically just solve for x. So we are going to, first of all, get rid of the fractions. So we can multiply across by 12. So 5 by 12 is 60. Minus 2 over 3 by 12 is minus 8. And we have an x stuck on. That's less than or equal to 7 by 12 is 84. And minus 3 over 4 x by 12 is minus 9 x. The reason I multiplied by 12 is because 3 and 4 multiplied together give us 12. So 12 would be our common denominator of 3 and 4. Alternatively, we could have turned the left hand side, hand side into two fractions, the right hand side into two fractions, simplified both sides and then cross multiply. So we have 60 minus 8x is less than or equal to 84 minus 9x. And then we're going to get all our x's on one side. So we're going to bring the minus 9x over to the left hand side. It becomes plus 9x. And plus 9x minus 8x is x. And then we're going to bring the 60 over to the right hand side. It becomes minus 60. And 84 minus 60 is 24. So we end up with x values less than or equal to 24. So it's going to be x values greater or equal to 0. But less than or equal to 24.